Praise the Lord, everybody. We certainly do thank and praise the Lord for his grace and his mercy, his love and his kindness that he has shown toward us. We certainly do give thanks unto the Lord because the Bible says he is worthy of the praise. And we certainly do want to magnify his holy name because he's our strength, he's our refuge, he's our fortress, especially in the time of trouble. As we are living these days, what the Bible calls the last days, uh, let us look to him. Let us look unto the Lord for our strength and our refuge, especially in our times of trouble. And I want to welcome you to a, another broadcast of Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church, uh, Erie, PA, 501 West 31st Street, uh, Erie, PA, 16508. And where I am the lead pastor, Pastor Frank L. Quinn, Sr. And we certainly do thank God for our leadership that is here at Christian Ministries. And my lovely wife, Tracy Quinn, we thank God for her. And we also thank God for our members, our members of Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church. And our, our vision, the, people, the Lord says, without a vision, the people perish or without a vision, there's chaos. So um, we want to thank God that we have a vision to be a caring fellowship, leading souls to Christ, strengthening families and members, making disciples, equipping them for service and community ministry. Uh, we also have a purpose. Our purpose is to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ through effective, responsible ministry. And also, uh, what we want to do is do that by intentional, creative, and dynamic fellowship. So we certainly do thank God for our purpose and our vision. Amen. And we thank God that he has given us the will and to do of his good pleasure. And I want to go before the Lord on today, uh, because this is a very special day the day that the Lord has made. And the scripture says, we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Though it may be windy outside, uh, it's still warming up. That lets me know that uh, spring, the feeling of spring is truly on its way. <laughs> so we wanna go before the Lord in prayer. Uh, also, we wanna remember, uh, as I often say, men and women and children everywhere, uh, that the Lord will continue to save and add to the church daily, such as should be saved. It's all about salvation. It's all about deliverance. It's all about us doing those things that are necessary to build the kingdom of God. And in doing that, it encompasses us to caring for uh, the needs of God and to care for the needs of one another. So that's an all-inclusive, holistic approach to the serving and to the worshiping of our God. So we want to certainly go before the Lord in prayer. Remember those that are suffering and going through the bereaving um, in our country and throughout this world and pray for our leadership especially. We should be uh, bombarding heaven uh, that the Lord will give wisdom and knowledge and understanding to uh, our leaders both locally, statewide, and uh, federally nationally and also to globally that the Lord will open up open up uh, the windows of heaven and pour out blessings and when I'm referring to blessings right now is wisdom knowledge and understanding and a cohesiveness to work together uh, let us pray also too for the churches uh, everywhere that relief be uh, made known by his people that everything will be all right. I was talking to a banker um, on yesterday, and um, he was talking about how a lot of churches are, are going after that CARES money and things such as that are hurting and are in need. And we trust God. We believe God, that God will take care of his people. And, um, and taking care of his people, taking care of his church, God has provided a means and a way amen for his people and his church to be taken care of so let us pray 
as well, uh, that when we come out of this, we'll come out of being better, being stronger in the Lord. So as we get ready to pray, let us pray. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we certainly do thank you, Lord, for your grace, your mercy, your love, and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for the Bible study on tonight. We ask you, Lord, that you send forth an anointing, anoint our minds and our spirit, that we may rejoice, that we may give you thanks, that we may receive of your word, that we may apply it to our daily lives. And Father, we ask you, Lord, that you remember each and every request that's been made known to you, Lord. You are our strength, our rock, and our shield. We ask you, Lord, that you'll grant the door of utterance. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Uh, we certainly, uh, once again, thank God for our Bible study on tonight. Um, and the Lord has certainly given us a word uh, uh, for you all that are, are coming online. Um, we want you to share and want you to invite somebody, remind them <clears throat> that uh, the Bible study is going on and, and send out some texts and send out some information and share this with your friends so that they can receive this word, the word of the Lord. And as we get ready uh, to delve into our Bible study, on last week we talked about uh, the strength of the Lord and we talked about uh, the armor, the armor of the Lord. And uh, I want to continue that thought on tonight um, because um, in order for us to really perform the duties and the responsibilities that the Lord wants us to perform or that we're required to do, we need God's strength. We need the strength of the Lord to be empowered to do the things of the Lord. And uh, in thinking about even the season that we're in right now, the season that we're in right now, um, we have to continually be on guard and watch ourselves because um, our routine has been disturbed. Our routine has been disturbed as far as uh, coming to Bible study, prayer, um, uh, socialization, uh, being uh, out and about, and things such as that. And also, too, our spiritual lives have been disturbed. And the enemy takes every opportunity he can to take advantage of any disruptions in our lives. Um, uh, the Bible says that the devil, is his mission and his plan is to kill, steal, and to destroy. He wants to kill you. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. He wants to uh, steal, steal. And, he, and anybody that has studied the word steal, it has a connotation of, of working undercover, wherein people uh, uh, don't see you, stealthy. And that's the way the enemy is. He works undercover. He's stealthy. And he wants to steal um, uh, things that God has given unto you. And he also wants to steal the power and the, uh, we can go on and on. He wants to steal, I'm just saying it, everything that God has given unto you. He wants to steal that so that you won't worship God, so you won't praise God, so you won't live the life that God has intended for you to live. And he also, through that whole process, he wants to destroy you. He wants to destroy you. Um, and uh, Jesus told Peter, he said, the devil has desired to sift you as wheat. But notice what Jesus said, I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And he said, after you are converted, strengthen your brother. That, that, that scripture there is loaded, it's packed. Uh, but it gives us insight on what the enemy wants to do to our lives. And he's, he can take advantage of our, our stay at home, our distancing, and the fact that we are out of our routine of coming to worship, coming to prayers, reading and studying the Bible, wherein uh, we could become weak. We could become weak. When this pandemic is lifted and things are open, realigned, um, some people will be too weak to even come back to the house of the Lord. They'll be too weak 
to come back to the house of prayer. They'll be too weak uh, to get into their, uh, to the word, to make the transition, uh, to get back into Bible study. The scripture says that we are not ignorant to Satan's devices. We ought not to be ignorant of the things that the enemy is trying to do in our lives. So therefore, uh, if we don't take this time to build ourselves up, the scripture says, build yourself up on your most holy faith. And then it says, praying in the Holy Spirit or in the Holy Ghost. So you have to uh, build yourself up. If in, especially in these times, you have to get yourself strong and maintain a strong spiritual life in order for you to get back into your routine with the Lord, if you'll allow me to say it that way. When, because some people, um, I'm sorry, I'm, I don't want to uh, say it like this, but some people, if they're not paying attention, they're, they're going to be consumed and uh, swallowed up by the things that are going on around them. But those that keep focus, those that keep watch, the Bible says, watch as well as pray. You got to watch and as well as pray. You've got to build yourself up. You got to keep your mind stayed on the Lord. You got to watch the, the tactics of the enemy because he's shrewd. And in order to do that, the Bible tells us uh, to uh, put on the whole armor of God so that we would be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And uh, I certainly do thank God uh, once again for the Bible study on tonight. And I just want you to turn with me um, to the book of Romans, the book of Romans uh, chapter uh, 13. Book of Romans chapter 13. Uh, Romans 13 and verse number 12. And I, and I particularly uh, like this particular chapter as it tells us, you know, that, you know, that we have to be subject to the higher powers. And then I like what it says that verse number one, it says, let every soul be subject to the higher powers, uh, for there is no power but of God, and the powers that be are uh, ordained of God. And, and what I want to focus in on that particular verse is, is this is that all power, which means here, authority and power comes from God. All authority comes from God. God is the author of authority. And anybody that, that has authority, legitimate authority, it is given to them by God. It is given to them by God. And, um, uh, and, but all authority is subject to God. You remember when Jesus was uh, being confronted by uh, Pilate, and Pilate told him uh, at the time that he was trying to crucify Jesus uh, that, that, don't you know I have a power to, to, to crucify you? And Jesus told him that um, basically he was quoting this scripture um, and saying that the, the power that uh, you think you have comes from God, but don't you know I got power too to call down legions of angels? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. So, so whatever uh, trick or that the enemy tries to bring you to tell you that he has power, Jesus has superseded all power. He has superseded all his power and authority. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And, and, and that the powers that be, be of God. Thank you, Lord. So as we look here in the scripture, and we'll develop that thought as further as we move on. As we look here in the scripture, in the book of Romans chapter 13 and verse number 12, notice what it says. It says, the night is far spent, the day is is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. So what this scripture is saying is, is simply that 
uh, the church age is coming to an end. The church age is coming to an end. The church age, it started in the book of Acts uh, when the, on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost fell over 2,000 years ago. And it's, it's literally coming to an end. When the end is, I don't know. But, but I know that the end is closer than when we first believed. And um, the scripture says, the day is at hand, or the coming of the Lord is at hand. The coming of the Lord Jesus is at hand. And it says, let us... Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Let us cast off, uh, though, therefore, those things that uh, represent works of darkness. Works of darkness are the things that be evil. So let us stop doing evil, it says. And then it says, uh, and let us put on the armor of light. So what what. This, the, the Romans writer is telling us is that we must cast off those things that are evil, stop doing evil, and then we must put on um, the, the, those things or the armor of light. The armor represents our protection. The armor represents our protection. Uh, to be able to uh, repel uh, the fiery darts of the wicked one, to be able to withstand his attacks. And I want to I come back to this particular scripture uh, later on in our Bible study because um, uh, when I do that, I'm going to bring the whole Bible study together. So uh, what the scriptures is telling us then is that uh, the enemy, he is, he wants to kill, steal, and to destroy. He wants to bombard us with things that uh, uh, distract us and to get us to do things that are evil. But the scripture says God is light and in him there's no darkness at all. So when, when an individual gets saved, the the, the main purpose of the gospel of Jesus Christ is to turn people from darkness to light, turn people from doing evil to living out a righteous life. Notice, and it says, from the power of Satan unto God, from the uh, uh, influence of Satan unto God. This is the purpose of the gospel. To, to, to give people repentance, to give them a mind so that they can turn. And the power of the gospel also gives us an inheritance which is in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And to give us faith to believe, to believe all of the promises of God, my God. And, and that's the purpose of the gospel. The good news of the gospel Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to those that are captive, to set at liberty them that have been bruised, uh, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. The, the gospel or the light of the word of God is all about restoration. It's all about restoring us and renewing us and regenerating us so that we'll be able and be ready for when the Lord comes, for when the Lord comes. In order to do that though, you have to build yourself up. You have to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Hallelujah. So we want you to go over then with us to the book of Ephesians. And y'all just bear with me. Stay with me and we'll tie all this in together. I'm sure of it. Being led by the Spirit and being led by the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. So in the book of, in the book of uh, um, Ephesians chapter number 6, um, verse number 11 well, verse number 10, it says, finally, 
uh, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So what Paul is saying is, is that in order for us to do, because he uses that word finally, in order for us to live out uh, and accomplish that which God would have us to do, we must be strong, be strong in the Lord. And I just want to park here just for a quick moment. Um, there's a lot of thoughts in people's mind that, that say that, you know, it's your life. You can live your life the way you want to live your life. And uh, in certain respects, uh, that's true. Uh, but when you are a born again believer, uh, the scripture says you've been bought with a price. Jesus Christ paid the price for your life. And he set you free from the power and, uh, and the influence of the devil. He set you free from the power and the influence of the devil for what purpose? To serve God so that, so that, so that he would be your Lord, so that you would submit your life unto him. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. So if you want to serve God, then you have to give your life to the Lord. And therefore, uh, what Paul calls a become a bond servant. In other words, you, you, you freely serve the Lord with all your might, with all your strength, with all your heart, with everything that it was within you. You serve the Lord. So when people say that, that it's your life, you can do what you want to do. Uh, if you are in Christ Jesus, that is not a true statement. If you are walking with the Lord, that is not a true statement. The, your steps are ordered by the Lord. Your way of life is ordered by the Lord. You have to love the way God wants you to love. You have to give the way God wants you to give. You have to live your lifestyle the way God has ordained for you to live your lifestyle according to his word. Amen? So, so, so let us not be fooled. Let us not trick ourselves and let us not uh, allow others to promote a way of life uh, that is contrary to what God has ordained. In other words, don't let nobody deceive you. Don't let nobody trick you by false teaching or by false doctrine to make you believe that it's your thing and you can do what you want to do with it. Oh, hallelujah. I was about to I was about to get ghetto for a moment, but I gotta realize I'm I'm probably national here, nationwide, and I don't want to get too ghetto. But I want you to know that 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 what God has said in his word, uh, that's what you have to live by. The scripture says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. If you want to go to heaven. You're going to live the way God says live. If you uh, don't care and don't mind going to hell, then, then you can do what you want to do. You can live the way you want to live. But the power that is in Jesus, the anointing that is in Jesus, and he, what he transfers to us, it causes us to break that yoke, to break that chain, uh, to live a lifestyle that glorifies God. Hallelujah. And those that want to live that type of lifestyle, they, 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 they live according to the word of God. They know that they've been bought with a price, that they're not their own, that they are a new creature created in Christ Jesus, that the old lifestyle has passed away and behold, all things have become new. The old lifestyle is enmity against God. The works of the flesh, living, living a carnal lifestyle, 
That's enmity against God. God hates that. That's the reason why Jesus Christ, he himself was made manifest to destroy the works of the devil in your life. Hallelujah. So, so I just want to come against that spirit that, that, that people have in their own mind that, that if you're going to live for Jesus, you can live any kind of way. If you're going to walk with the Lord, you can still do what you want to do and please the Lord. It's not so. It's not so. It's not written. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen, brother pastor. Uh, so when we look at the scriptures here, Paul says, put on the whole armor. No, verse number 10. I'm sorry. He says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong, be empowered by the Lord. Amen. Be empowered by him because he has all authority. He has all rule. And in the power of his might. That word power there, it means the ability to, to do all things through Christ that strengthens you. All right. So notice then. Verse number 11, it says, put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Uh, to do the will of God, you must be empowered and protected by his whole armor. In order to do the will of God, you must be empowered and protected by his whole armor. Uh, let me say that again so that people will catch it. In order to do the will of God, to do God's will concerning you, he, you have to be empowered. You have to be empowered by God's strength. And you also must be protected by his armor. So it's a, it's a two edge. You've got to be empowered and you've got to be protected by his armor. When I say you got to be protected by his armor, his armor gives you the ability to propel the attacks of the enemy. It, it gives you the ability to withstand the attacks of the enemy. Uh, what, now I'm going to focus in on uh, uh, the, 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 the enemy. We spend, uh, if you allow me to say it this way, we spend too much time in a defense mode against the enemy. Uh, we spend too much time worrying about what the enemy is doing, wherein he distracts us. He keeps us fearful. Uh, I've noticed, I've noticed, uh, it's been revealed to me in everyone's walk with the Lord. And this happens to everybody. That, that there is a bombardment of attacks that come against us. Not just one devil or one enemy is, is fighting us. Uh, it's a multitude of enemies that fight us. And the one that always accompanies that fight is fear. The fear has torment. And everybody that walks with God experiences the devil or the enemy of fear. And that's why the scripture says God has not given us the spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. So, so when, when fear tries to grip you from moving forward with the Lord, think it not strange. Don't think that some, some, something has happened to you and you could be on a mountaintop being strong in the Lord. But fear, uh, that spirit of fear will always come with any other attack of the enemy. Uh, let, me give you, let me give you another illustration. You remember uh, Elisha? Elisha in the Bible was a powerful man of God. And he was the one that stood against, stood against all those false prophets and, and told them the God that answered by fire, let him be God. And he said, build an altar. 
uh, and, and you build an altar and I'll build an altar. And, and uh, the God that answers by fire, let him be God. So he let them go first. They built their altar and, and they called on their God and no fire came. And he mocked them, Elisha did. He said he must be sleeping. He must be taking a journey. You know, cry a little louder, so to speak. And then when it came his turn, he was bold in boasting in God. And, and, and he told him, put some, put some uh, uh, water on my sacrifice. And, and he, had the, he had rocks all around it. And he called on God. God came down by fire. And I like the, when you read the scripture, it talks about it. He said God even licked up the dust. Uh, uh, and, that, and in my own mind, I'm trying to imagine with my sanctified mind, how can you lick up the dust? My God. But, but God answered by fire. Uh, showing that 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 God was with Elijah and 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 that the power of God had answered but uh, Elijah he heard that Jezebel was after him oh he got fearful and he begins to run thank you Lord he began to run so he showed the power of God the power of God was manifested Hallelujah. But in that, also, too, he had an element of fear. And who did he fear? He feared that Jezebel spirit. Amen. He feared the reputation of Jezebel. Anytime the enemy wants to hold you captive and wants to stop you from moving forward, he's going to send a bully of fear to try to stop you from moving. Amen. To try to block you from moving forward. Hallelujah. So you've got to put on the whole armor of God so you'll know how to attack that fearful spirit. And not only that fearful spirit, but any fear spirit that's going to try to attack you in your life. But the reason why I bring up fear is that's always accompanied by any other spiritual attack. Fear is always accompanied by any other spiritual attack to grip your heart, to make you anxious, to make you nervous, to stop you from moving forward. No matter what you do, trying to do for the Lord, fear is always going to try to be prevalent to stop you from moving forward. But you've got to know the truth. That's why he says, I'm getting ahead of myself. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, gird your loins about with truth. You got to know the truth that God has not given you the spirit of fear. You got to know the truth that spear, fear has torment. Amen. It's not of God. So anytime a, a, a spirit and uh, tries to enter into your thought pattern that, that you can't do it, you've got to know the truth. That you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. Know that that spirit or know that that thought is not of God. And then you've got to take and do what uh, uh, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter number 10 uh, says. That you've got to take that thought into captivity. Hallelujah. And bring it into obedience of Christ. Hallelujah. In other words... You can't exalt that fear. You've got to exalt God in your imagination, in your mind. Amen. Uh, I want to say this. My God. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost moving up in here. Anything that you pay too much attention to, you exalt it and it becomes manifested in your life. Uh, let me say that a different way. Anything that you pay attention to becomes exalted and it manifests in your life. If, if when you come to church and you walk into the sanctuary, you exalt God, you worship and praise God, he then manifests in your life. If you pay too much attention to the devil and exalt the devil, he'll manifest in your life. It makes a difference to what you pay attention to, what you focus on. That's why you got to focus on the Lord. 
That's why you got to think and keep your mind stayed on him. And if you do that, he will keep you in perfect peace. My God, who am I talking to today? Hallelujah, my God, hallelujah. I thank God for this word on today. So notice what Paul is saying. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He said in, in verse number 12, uh, Ephesians 12, uh, Ephesians 6 and 12, he says, uh, no, 6 and 11, he says, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So he says, put on the whole armor, the complete armor. And he gives us a description of what the complete armor is. And that's a shield, it's a sword, it's, it's a helmet, uh, it's a belt, it's a blessed plate of righteousness. Amen? Thank you, Lord. And, and it's uh, those Roman soldiers, they also carried what the scripture calls a lance. And, and, and that lance represents prayer. We'll get into that in just a moment. So notice what he says. He says, uh, verse number 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, in high places. Now, uh, when Paul is saying we wrestle not against flesh and blood, what, he, what he's saying, he's not saying that people aren't evil uh, because you got some evil people, thank you Lord, in this world that you've got to watch out for. But he's saying that the greatest influence of evil are, is the devil. And when you, when you study that when he, the scripture, when he says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Those are literally four levels of government that the enemy operates in. And I just want to be say this briefly because I don't have a whole lot of time. Uh, to really get into this the way I really want to get into this. But, but the devil is, is in order. He has his, his kingdom, if you'll allow me to say it, the kingdom of Satan, the kingdom of darkness. The scripture describes him as the prince of, uh, the prince of power of this world. Uh, uh, he has rank and file in order. He has systematic order and levels of governments. Thank you, Lord, that he operates in to control his kingdom and to control the attacks upon not only the people of God, but on people in general. Thank you, Lord. And, 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 and he has, he has uh, illegitimate authority and power because he's a squatter. He's a trespasser because Jesus Christ himself gained us the victory. But when we don't know our rights, when we don't know our authority, we allow the devil to occupy our space, to, to hold up our blessings. Uh, I myself, I'm a landlord. Thank you, Lord. And uh, uh, I rent out uh, an apartment and I've done it. And some people don't want to pay. Some people uh, just want to stay there for free. So, so they're squatters at that point when they don't uh, pay rent, when they don't give the money. They're squatters. And, and uh, in order for me to get them out, I can't just go in there and throw them out. I've got to go through the legitimate means that has been established by law in order for them to get out of my house or get out of the apartment. And, and, and that's the way the devil is. The devil is a squatter. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And you just can't go in there and throw him out. Huh? But you can use the power and authority that has been given you through Jesus Christ to get him out of your house, to get him out of your life, 
to get them out uh, from squatting on your stuff. Hallelujah. My God in heaven. Hallelujah. Kick the devil out. But you got to use that power and authority that comes through Jesus Christ. And uh, I want to go back now when it's talking about uh, principalities and powers and authority. Thank you, Lord. Oh, my God. I feel the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. And, and when, we, when we look at that, we got to, the scripture says, Gird our loins about with truth. Amen. So you got to know the truth of who you are and whose you are and exercise your authority. Amen. Hallelujah. When it comes down to fighting the devil and, and, and just don't be on the defensive all the time. You got to run some plays too. You got to, you got to initiate some activity yourself. Hallelujah. It's, don't just sit back and just try to block, block all that what the enemy is trying to throw your way. You shoot some stuff at him. You try to score. You, you move forward. You press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God, uh, which is in Christ Jesus. When Jesus uh, asked his disciples, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And you know they went through the litany, and uh, uh, but but he said, "Ask Peter, who do you say?" And Peter said, "Thou art the Christ, the Son of the Living God." And he said, "Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed that to you." He said, "Upon this rock I'm going to build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it." What he said, "The gates of hell shall not prevail." In other words, the gates were, were, were not meant to keep you out, but the gates were there that, that you can kick them in so that you can expand the territory of the kingdom of God. So what are you saying, Brother Pastor? That when he's saying the gates of hell shall not prevail, that, that, that every kingdom wants territory. Every king wants territory. And the Lord expects us to advance his kingdom and take back the territory that the enemy has stolen. So he's giving you power and authority to operate and to kick in the kingdom of the devil. To open his gates so you can proclaim the power that, that God has given you and take back all the territory that the enemy has stolen. Hallelujah. My God. When, when, I, I, I got an elbow, Shandalavasha. I got to move on. But y'all remember, thank you, Lord, when the children of Israel, they were promised the promised land. Amen. A land flowing with milk and honey. Amen. And, and, and all they needed to do was to take that territory from the Canaanites and all those other ites that were there that were squatting. <laughs> Hallelujah. That were there illegally because God had given to them. So they had to go there and kick in the gates of hell. Hallelujah. And take back that which God, take it, that which God has given unto them. And that's what God expects us to do. Thank you, Lord. So just don't, just don't live your life trying to defend yourself against the enemy. Thank you, Lord. You run some offense. You uh, carry out the plan that God has for your life. Don't, don't be afraid to, to, to do what God has said do. Don't be afraid to step out on that which God has ordained for you to do. My God, I feel, I feel a prophecy coming on in my spirit. Hallelujah, through the power of the Holy Ghost. God has told some of you to, to, to do this and to do that. Thank you, Lord. And sometimes fear would, would, would grip your heart to kept, keep you from moving forward. And, that, and that's natural. That's normal. And, and, but God wants you to overcome that fear and step out on him. Where there's vision, there is provision. And God has provided Everything that you need that pertains to life and godliness. Build up your faith. Trust in your God. Believe in his word. And be like uh, uh, the woman 
Hallelujah. If I perish, hallelujah, I perish, but I'm going to see the king. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. My God, my God. So let us look at the scriptures here. Thank you, Jesus. So, so the scriptures say, and I want to just give you some word because uh, that's, that's what you need in order to de uh, defeat the devil. Not just my testimony, not just anybody's testimony, but you need some word, amen, that you know that the devil is defeated. So I want you to go, uh, uh, his government is cast down. Ephesians chapter number two. Oh my God. Ephesians chapter number two and uh, verse number two. Uh, let me read verse number one. He says, uh, and ye have he quickened. In other words, and you have he made alive uh, who were dead and trespasses in sin. Thank you, Lord. Uh, wherein in time past ye walked according to to the course of this world. That's why I said uh, earlier that you've been bought with a price. You're not your own. Uh, in time past, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. And that's the devil. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom you had your conversation in time past, and the lust of your flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, uh, even as others. But God, somebody say, but God. But God, who is rich in mercy, and for this great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in our sins, have quickened us. Notice, have quickened us together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And, 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 and Christ himself, he's far above principalities, of uh, 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 powers, and he is exalted. Now, now, now notice, uh, when he says that, that we are seated with him in heavenly places, in Christ Jesus, uh, oftentimes that that particular scriptures it eludes us because I'm saved, I'm sanctified, and in, in and I'm down here on this earth, and I'm fighting against the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. So with my natural eye, I can't see that I'm really seated with Christ in heavenly places, uh, but I have to realize that God has made me a spiritual being. Uh, when, when you are in Christ Jesus, you become, and I'm saying this in, in, in an illustrated way, that you become a spiritual being. When you walk according to the course of this world, uh, the scripture says we are spirit, soul, and body. But when we walked according to the course of this world, we had it backwards. We were body, soul, and spirit. But when the alignment came, and we, and through Christ Jesus accepting him as our Lord and Savior, he repositioned us. Now that we're, we are now spirit, soul, and body, what leads us? Our spirit. So the spiritual things that be of God, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, that's what I've got to focus on. That should be more of a reality than the natural things. And, 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 and I've got to always recognize the fact that I'm seated together with Christ Jesus in heavenly places, far above principalities. Far above powers of wickedness and authority. I've got authority in Christ Jesus. Why? Because I'm seated with him. What makes him so special? Because he has the total victory. When Jesus got up out that grave, he told his disciples, 
all power in heaven and in earth has been given unto me. You've got to realize that you've got all power in Christ Jesus, which means you've got all power over the enemy, over the devil. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, let's move on. Notice, thank you, Lord. The devil is described as the prince of the power of the air. Let's go over to Colossians. Colossians chapter... Ah, Colossians chapter number 2. Hallelujah. My God. I'm feeling something in here. Hallelujah. Colossians. I should have had all my scriptures marked out. Y'all bear with me. Thank you, Lord. Colossians chapter number 2. And let's look at verse 15. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 15. Well, let me, let's, let me, let me go back up. Verse number 12, because I want you to get this. Something happened. He says, buried with him in baptism, where also you were risen with him through faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. Now notice what it says. You were buried with Jesus in baptism. That's why it's important to get baptized in the name of Jesus. Wherein also you were risen with him. Huh? And you were risen to walk in the newness of life, but you were also risen to sit with him in heavenly places. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Wherein, now this happens through faith of the operation of God. God does it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Who raised him from the dead. Now notice verse 13. And you being dead in sins and, uh, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he hath quickened together with him, having forgiven you of all your trespasses. God forgave you of all your sin uh, through Christ Jesus. Uh, notice, then he says, verse 14, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that were against us, and part of that was offering up uh, burnt offerings and sacrifices and, and, and observance of days and all this other kind of stuff that's written in the Old Testament, uh, which was contrary to us and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Jesus said, uh, uh, it is finished. And he fulfilled everything that was written in the law concerning him. All right, now, verse 15 is what, he, what we're after. And having spoiled... Uh, principalities and powers he had made a show of them openly triumphing over it amen triumphing over them in it in other words when Christ died hallelujah and got up from that grave he triumphed over the power of the devil triumphed over all the power of the enemy thank you Lord Hallelujah. And he says here, let no man therefore judge you in meat and drink or any respect of a holy day of a new moon or a Sabbath, which is a shadow uh, or a shadow of things to come. But the body is of Christ. Let nobody beguile you of reward or involuntary humility of worshiping of angels, inducing uh, intruding into those things which uh, he have not seen, vainly puffed up in their mind. So what he's saying here is, uh, don't allow the enemy to confuse you. Amen? You have victory in Jesus. Don't let no spirit or no principality tell you that you don't have authority. Amen? Hallelujah. And if you know these things, you can be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Hallelujah. Now, let me go on to another scripture. I want, I want you to see that there's victory, that we got the victory in Jesus. Hebrews chapter number 12. I'm sorry, Hebrews chapter number 2. Hebrews chapter number 2 and verse 14. 
And it says here, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he, him, he also himself likewise took of the same. It's talking about Jesus. That through death he might destroy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Him that had the power of death and that is the devil. Hallelujah. Jesus destroyed the power, that power, that authority. That word power there means authority. The devil has no authority over a child of God. Hallelujah. You with me? The devil has no authority over you. Hallelujah. Now notice. Uh, he said that is the devil. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetimes subject to bondage. Now, I got one more scripture that I want to go to um, in uh, 1 John. 1 John. I hope you're writing these down and you can study them later. 1 John chapter uh, number 3. 1 John chapter number 3 and verse number 8. He says, He that committed sin is of the devil. If you live, that's why I say, you can't live your life and do what you want to do and still call yourself a child of God. That's of the devil. Don't be deceived. All right? He said, He that committed sin is of the devil. The devil sent it from the beginning. For this purpose, this is why we're here. He says, For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, talking about Jesus, that he might destroy, there's that word again, destroy the works of the devil. And that word destroy literally means demolish. Hallelujah. So that it cannot be put back together again by the enemy. We have to put it back together if, 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 if we don't want to live with Christ. In other words, we have to make ourselves a transgressor by going back into the things that God has brought us out of. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. But don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Thank you, Lord. The Jesus has destroyed forever the works of the devil. So that's why he said, uh, put on the whole armor of God that ye might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And I want you to study these scriptures on your own that I gave you. Uh, Ephesians chapter number 2, verse number 2. Um, uh, Colossians uh, chapter 2, verse 15. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 8. Amen? Thank you, Lord. So, so we're proving then that Jesus has gained us the victory. Verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, like I said, those principalities, they represent four levels of government or authority that the enemy tries to use to attack us with. Uh, but we saw in the scriptures that Jesus, he seated far above principalities, far above powers and authority. And we are seated together with him. Hallelujah. So therefore, by default, we have power and authority over the devil. Hallelujah. Over the enemy. For this cause was Jesus Christ made manifest to destroy the works of the devil in your life. So um, when you study the scriptures and begin to understand spiritual warfare, you'll understand that the devil does not have any protection. That the devil does not have any armor. So therefore, when we use God's armor to attack him, he, it's, it's like a no contest. It's like no fight. Amen? 
because he's not protected. And when we use the protection that God has given us, it guarantees a victory. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. I wish we would clap our hands and give God some glory. All right, so we see here. So he says, for we wrestle not. That word wrestle, it means hand-to-hand -hand combat. Thank you, Lord. You've got to realize that you're in a fight. Hallelujah. It's, it's an unbalanced fight. It's a fixed fight, but it's a fight nonetheless. And the enemy gets advantage of us when we don't use or put on the whole armor of God. So notice, he says, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye might be able to withstand in the evil day. So when the enemy is trying to attack you, and you put on that whole armor, you'll be able to withstand his attack. You'll be able to fight against him. You, your armor will be able to repel it, propel it. Thank you, Lord. It's like rain -X. When you put rain -X on your windshield and rain comes, it propels that rain. It, it beads up and it flies off. Same like with, with the enemy. When the enemy comes up against you like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against them. He'll fly off of you. He said, resist the devil steadfast and he will flee. You can't give place or room to the devil. Hallelujah. You got to give room and place to the power of God that is in your life. Hallelujah. My God, my God, my God. I want you to hear me today. Hallelujah. Because the enemy, he's trying to launch an attack upon us to keep us away, to, to make us fall by the wayside. But thanks be to God that giveth us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now notice what he says. He says here, wherefore, take on the whole armor. The armor represents your protection. Amen? It represents your protection. You've got to be strong and, and empowered by God, but you also got to put on the armor, which represents your protection. You've got to have protection. You've got to have protection. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You need protection. So he says to protect you in the evil day. The evil day is any time the enemy is trying to attack you, attack your mind, attack your family, attack your finances, attack whatever scenario there is. But you've got to be strong and put on the whole armor of God so that you'll be able to withstand the attack. The, 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 the armor of God is the only thing that can withstand his attack. There's nothing else outside of it that can withstand the attack of the enemy. Let's not, let's not fool ourselves. You can't do positive meditation to attack, to, to, to stand against the enemy. You can't uh, take value, drink uh, alcohol to withstand the attack of the enemy. You can't get into Buddha. You can't get into yoga and think you're going to be able to withstand the attack of the enemy. Well, the only thing that's dedicated to overcome the enemy is the armor of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now notice. Notice. He says here, uh, verse 14. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth. So you need some truth. Having, having on the breastplate of righteousness. So you need some righteousness. Having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So you need the gospel. And above, taking, above all, taking the shield of faith. So you need faith. Wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take on the helmet of salvation. So you need to know about salvation. Uh, and the sword of the spirit. Which is the word of God. So you got to know about the word of God. Then verse 18 it says. Praying always with all prayer and supplication. So you need prayer. Amen. That's that lance that I was talking about. You need prayer. 
Thank you, Jesus. You need to be praying, praying with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. You got to pray in the spirit, in the Holy Ghost, in the anointing. Thank you, Lord. You, uh, let me, I'm going to get to that in a minute. But you got to pray in the spirit. Thank you, Lord. You just can't be walking around uh, saying, Lord, I thank you. Lord, give me grace. Give me strength. You got to get down to business and stir up the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You got to pray in the spirit because we are spiritual beings. The more you pray in the spirit, the more you'll see through the spirit. The more you pray in the spirit, the more you see through the spirit, which, which, is, which is more uh, revelational, hallelujah, which is more inspirational, which is more powerful than what you can see with your naked eye. Hallelujah. And with your naked eye, you'll miss the things that be of God. But if you walk in the spirit by praying in the spirit, you'll see the hand of the enemy trying to attack you and try to bring you down. The reason why people are weak and falling bound by the wayside is because they're not in the spirit. They're not praying in the spirit. They're not seeking God in the spirit. They're not going into those unknown tongues as the spirit of God gives the utterance. You should train yourself. You should train yourself to pray in the spirit always. Uh, even, even when your mind is not on the spirit, you train your Holy Ghost spirit uh, uh, to allow it to have free course in your body, in your mind, where it can pray in the time of trouble. Hallelujah, in the time of need. My God, I remember when my wife, thank you, Lord, when she was uh, having our last baby, Sharice. Thank you, Lord. And, 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 and uh, there was some trouble uh, with the delivery. Uh, the umbilical cord was wrapped around her neck. And, and all of a sudden, you see all these doctors running in, bells and whistles going off. And, and I'm there by my wife's side. And the Holy Ghost said, pray. And I'm looking, I'm, I'm looking at what's going on, trying to figure this out. And the Holy Ghost said, pray. And I'm looking around and I'm trying to figure everything out. And the Holy Ghost said a third time, pray. And, and my mind was on the traumatic what was going on. But the Holy Ghost begins to pray within me. The Spirit of God stood up and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. In other words, it hijacked my brain and come on, shot. Hallelujah. It hijacked my mind and it begins to pray, make intercession. Thank you, Lord. And that's the power of prayer. That's the power of being in his presence where the Holy Ghost, the anointing can overshadow you in prayer. My God. And if, and if it had not been for the Lord who is on our side, thank you, Lord. Instead of having a funeral, we had a birthday. The baby was born. Thank you, Lord. All big and fat. Hallelujah. And looking good. Give God a praise. That's because the Spirit made intercession. Hey, hallelujah. We got to pray with the Spirit so it can make intercession. We are spiritual beings in a natural body. Our, our home is in heaven. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Our home is not down here in this respect. It's in heaven. We're spiritual. So you got to be spiritual. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. My God in heaven. So we see it in. Uh, I got another 15 minutes and I'll, I'll let you go. Stay with me. Thank you, Lord. So we're talking about that armor. That armor is truth. That armor is righteousness. That armor is the gospel. That armor is the helmet of salvation and the shield of faith. Hallelujah. That armor is, 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 is the word. That armor is, it also connects to prayer. My God, you need to pray to be able to operate in that armor. You should have a, a, a daily set time.
time of intercession, of being in prayer, to allow God to saturate your mind, to allow God to build you up. Hey, come on, shot. I don't know why I keep haunting on prayer. I'm trying to move on. But God wants somebody to pray. I'll pray without ceasing. He said, if my people that were called by my name, if they would humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then you'll hear from heaven, then you'll heal your land, then he'll forgive your sins. And let me just tell you, when you're praying and seeking God like that, you'll automatically turn from things that are ungodly. When you're seeking God and you want God to manifest his will in your life and you're playing in such a way as that, uh, uh, things to you that are uh, 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 used to be sinful, they'll become in exceedingly sinful. You'll, you'll get a greater understanding that, that, my God, I don't want that. I don't need that. It's like when you're out in the world, hallelujah, and you dated somebody. After you was at the bar, you had about five or six drinks. You got all drunk, and you went home with somebody, and you woke up with them. And when you looked over, you're like, oh, my God, <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And that's what sin would become to you. You'd be like, oh, my God. When God opens your eyes of your understanding and you begin to seek him, you begin to call on him and you begin to put on the whole armor of God. Things like that become weights and, and the sin, you'll, you'll be able to shed them off. Hallelujah. Be why? Because you see it in a different way. You see it in a spiritual way. Hallelujah. You understand. Thank you, Lord, that 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 is gross. That is that is that is wicked. And 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 I shall not I shall not be a partaker. So you'll lay it aside. You'll throw it away. You'll get rid of it so that you can press toward that mark. Ah, oh, that prize that is in Christ Jesus. Now, I, wanna, I want you to look, go, go with me. I'm going to tie this all in now. Thank you, Lord. Uh, we read in your hearing that, that verse in the book of Romans. Romans chapter uh, number 13 and verse number 12. Y'all bear with me. We're almost done. I hope you're getting something out of it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I don't want to be fighting against the air. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Romans chapter number 12. Romans chapter number 12. I'm sorry. Romans chapter 13 and verse number 12. Notice what it says. When we, this is the scripture that we started out reading. It says, the night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the whole armor of light. So what that scripture is saying, the church age is about the end. Uh, Jesus is soon to come. And anybody that is spiritual can understand that. They can see that. They can sense that. Uh, and he says, therefore... Cast off, cast off or put aside, let it go, the works of darkness and, and, and stop doing evil. Notice what he says. He said, put on the armor of light. Now, what he's referring to, light is a, a symbol of the presence of God. It's a symbol of God's righteousness. And his activity. The Bible says God is light. And in him there's no darkness at all. Darkness represents evil. Darkness represents error. Darkness represents the works of Satan. Anytime that you are operating in the works of the flesh. You're operating in evil. Envy, jealousy, murder, hatred. Variance and, and all these other uh, uh, rioting and, 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 and 
uh, 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 sexual activity outside of marriage, homosexuality, all of the above. Thank you, Lord. Uh, 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 being irresponsible, uh, envy, jealousy, all of that is the works of the flesh. And, and that's the works of darkness. That's the operation of, of Satan's kingdom. But the operation of God's kingdom is righteousness, peace, joy. It's the fruit of the spirit. Thank you, Lord. Uh, temperance, patience, brotherly kindness, charity. Thank you, Lord. And those things are, are, are of the kingdom of God. Those things represent light. And notice, he said, the armor of light. And that armor of light represents the, uh, God's protection. God's protection. Thank you, Lord. Now, uh, uh, um, Jesus, he is the personification of, of, of God's divine revelation, or he's the, uh, the, the very image of God's light. Hallelujah, my God. And, and, and all of that light, it's representative in the whole armor of God. In other words, what I'm trying to say here is, is that if you're going to put on the whole armor of God, you've got to put on Christ. Uh, and therefore, you've got to know the truth about Jesus. You've got to uh, know the righteousness about Jesus. You've got to know the gospel of Jesus Christ. You've got to uh, uh, take on the faith of Jesus Christ. You've got to uh, 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 put on the helmet of salvation. Know everything that is, is related to the salvation about Jesus. You've got to take on the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word. You've got to know the Word about Jesus. And, and you've got to pray, hallelujah, in the mode and in the way Jesus prayed. That's how you've got to put on that whole armor. In other words, you've got to increase your knowledge and your understanding about Jesus. He is the armor of light. He is the whole armor of God. It's all about Jesus. Hey, hallelujah. You got to increase your knowledge and your understanding about Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, let me give you some scripture. My God, let me give you some scripture. Uh, uh, St. John chapter 1. And verse number five, St. John chapter number one and verse number five. Uh, well, we can start with verse number one. He says, in the beginning was the word, talking about Jesus. The word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. All things were made for him. And without him, there was nothing that was made. Verse number four, in him is life. <laughs> in Jesus is life. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He says, uh, I am the way. Uh, <laughs> in him was life, and the life was the light of man. That word light means understanding. It means knowledge. It means information. <laughs> you got to have understanding about Jesus. You got to have knowledge about Jesus. That's the whole armor. All right? Now notice. Uh, the light and the light shineth in darkness. He shined in your dark heart, in your sinful heart. And the darkness comprehended not. Notice. And this was, there was a man that was sent from God uh, whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness to who? The light. John came to bear witness to Jesus. Who is the light? Notice that all men through him might believe. There's a scripture says that, that salvation is 
believing on God and Jesus Christ and the one whom he has sent. Hallelujah. My God. All right. Now notice. The same came to be a witness, to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. Verse number eight. He was not that light, talking about John, notice it's a capital L, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, go with me. Go with me uh, to... Uh, um, let's go with me to verse... Uh, I want you to go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter. Well, let's stay with John. John chapter number 8. Y'all bear with me for a moment. John chapter number 8 and verse number 12. I'm trying to give you some information. John chapter number 8 and verse number 12. Notice. And verse number 12 says, Then Jesus spake again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, shall not walk in the kingdoms of Satan, sin, but shall have the light of life. Amen. When you put on the whole armor, you have light and life. Amen. And notice who it is. It's Jesus. Now notice then. Um, go with me then to, to uh, first, uh, Ephesians chapter number 5. I'm going to be real quick here. Y'all bear with me. Ephesians chapter number 5 and verse number 8. 5 and verse number 8. He says, for this ye know that no man, no, um, let's see, 5 and 8, Ephesians 5 and 8. Thank you. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye what? Light in the world. Walk as what? Children of light. You were sometimes darkness. Uh, that's us. We were sometimes darkness, but now are we light. Thank you, Lord. So he says, walk as children of the light. So therefore, you must put on the whole armor of God. Notice then, in the Philippians chapter number 2, relating to us. Philippians chapter number 2 and verse 15. It says, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without uh, rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as what? Lights <laughs> in the world. God wants you to shine as a light as, as Christ shines as a light. Now, the devil too, I'm not going to go into it, the devil, too, has transformed himself into an angel of light. Amen? So you got to be on guard. The one thing that the enemy can't do is live holy. So you keep watching the enemy uh, as he has transformed himself into an angel of light. You keep watching him. Thank you, Lord. And he'll reveal himself. And, and you'll be able to see it because you walk in the light. As he is in the light. One more verse of scripture. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. Chapter. 1 Corinthians chapter number uh, 1. Go with me. 1 Corinthians chapter number 1. And verse number 30, it says this. But of him 
are you in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom. Jesus is our wisdom, our righteousness, our sanctification and redemption. According that it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Jesus Christ, that whole armor, represents Jesus. And, and, and he is our light. And the scripture says, let the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. That's in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. And it talks about Christ himself uh, being, being our enlightenment, that we may know what the hope of his calling is in the saints, within us. And in order for us to be able to do the things that God would have us to do and fight against the enemy who is trying to kill, steal, and destroy us, we got to Focus on Jesus. We got to study and read everything that we need to know about Jesus. But we got to do it in a systematic way. We got to know the truth that Jesus said. We've got to know the righteousness of what Jesus said and perform it. We've got to know uh, 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 the gospel of Jesus Christ. We've got to know the faith of the Son of God. Paul said it himself. He said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son. You gotta, you gotta know what the faith of the Son of God is. You gotta know what the mind of Christ is, the spirit of Christ is. That's putting on that armor, and you've got to uh, have your mind delivered at all times. Why? Because the battlefield is the mind. The devil wants to attack your mind. You gotta keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it comes the issues of life. My God, and then, hallelujah, you've got to, you've got to take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, uh, to come against the enemy. That's why I meant by, you got to run you some offenses. you got to stand on that Word and advance that Word that God has given unto you. The one thing that the devil wants to stop in your life is all the manifestation of the promises of God. He's trying to stop every promise that God has made you. You've got to be determined in your spirit, your soul, and your body that you will not be denied. That you will, that you will live out, hallelujah, according to the promises of God. And then with that, you've got to pray. You've got to pray, my friend, with all prayer and supplication. Hallelujah. You've got to trust God and believe his word. And that illumination of his word is Jesus. It's Jesus Christ. You got to study Jesus. You got to study, taking a systematic approach. When it says put on the whole armor of God, go systematically. Uh, reading about truth. Reading about faith. Reading about the gospel. Reading about righteousness. Reading about the word, hallelujah, how powerful the word is. Reading and studying about prayer. Study the prayers that are in the Bible. Now, uh, every time you do this, you put on his armor. And any, every time you captivate your mind with the word of God, you bring the manifestation of Jesus into your life. Anything that you focus on, it's manifested in your life. If it's good, you'll manifest good in your life. If it's evil, you'll manifest evil in your life. So choose to focus on the righteousness which is in Jesus Christ and it will manifest itself in your life. I guarantee you. Hallelujah. So we thank God for the Bible study on tonight. Truly, uh, I've been taking you through the paces. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And as I was studying this myself, the Lord was continually feeding my mind. 
So we pray and thank God for this word. And I'm excited. I'm encouraged. And I want the saints to realize and understand that we're in the last days. And, um, and right now there's a change going on in the world. Don't be caught up by the change. Get your mind and focus in on Jesus. Focus on the Lord. Become strong in the Lord. Do your spiritual push-ups. Do your spiritual jumping jacks. Exercise your faith. Trust in the Lord. Speak the word. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Rebuke the devil steadfast. You've got to do all of those things to be able to come out more than a conqueror. And when you come out more than a conqueror, come out with a deeper revelation. Come out with deeper understanding. Come out with deeper knowledge and wisdom about Jesus. Amen. So I'm going to pray with you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Bless each and every soul under the sound of my voice. And Lord, I thank you for this word on tonight. And y'all forgive me for going over as, uh, as, I, um, as I did. But it's important for me to finish it up so we can move on. Thank you, Lord. So we trust God that you've heard something, that something ex uh, came to your mind and your heart that's encouraging to you. So uh, tune in on Sunday at 930 for Bible study and tune in at 11 for our morning worship. And we thank God for each and every one of you in Jesus name. If we were here, uh, had the whole congregation here, we wouldn't get out to 730 anyway. <laughs> so we thank God for you. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you and keep the faith. In Jesus' name, amen.